Thanks to Upway for sponsoring a portion of this video. Folks, we are gonna have some fun today. Let's take a little trip down memory lane, enjoy a little nostalgia, and along the way, give ourselves a little perspective check. Today, we're pitting the brightest plasma TV ever made versus one of today's best OLED TVs. Let's go. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is a video I've wanted to do for a very long time. Today we're gonna pit Samsung's best plasma TV, the F8500, against Samsung's best TV to date, the S95C QD OLED. This is gonna be so much fun. If you like what we're up to here, smash that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. Do you remember plasma TVs fondly? Still using one at home? I wanna hear all about it. So get in there and let us know. Okay, let's get into this. So let's rewind back to 2012. LG had just announced its first OLED TV, a 55 inch model that would sell for $10,000. They were light, ridiculously thin, had perfect black levels and impressive color. It seemed like it might replace Plasma one day, but at 10 grand, it was still a pipe dream for most folks. Plasma was still the better choice for video enthusiasts, and that's where the Samsung F8500 here comes in. The F8500 was the brightest plasma TV that had ever been made, and it was a stunner in its day. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's see what a much younger, greener Caleb Dennison had to say about it. This is not something you want to miss out on. It's one of those TVs that people are going to be talking about five or six years from now. Uh, because it's just that great. Now, the Panasonic ZT60, which I also reviewed, seen here, took the crown that year as best plasma TV. But the F8500 in this video, I think makes a better comparison because it's the best and last plasma Samsung ever made. And we get to put it against the best TV Samsung has made to date, the S95C QD OLED. Now, as we go forward, keep in mind, this TV came out just before the iPhone 5. And it was out a full year before the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One made their debuts. People hadn't even started yelling at their Kinect cameras yet. That's gonna be relevant in a moment. So if you were gaming on this Samsung Plasma, you were gaming on a PS3 or Xbox 360. Hopefully, if you had an Xbox 360, it was one that had an HDMI port. Otherwise, you might have had to rock component video, which this TV handled only with a breakout cable. Now, the F8500 here was one of the early smart-ish TVs. I mean, it had Wi-Fi and it has a smart TV interface, sort of. Uh, there are some apps available. In fact, I wonder if they still work. Yeah, let's find out. Um, sure enough, Netflix loads and plays. Takes forever, but there you go, playing Netflix. Oh, also, there's this web browser that I remember being terrible and useless. Does that still work? Yeah, looks like it kind of works. Unfortunately, I don't have the cool silver remote with the swipe pad that made moving the cursor around a little bit easier, but you know what I do have? My hands. Yep, before the Xbox Kinect came out, there was the F8500 here with gesture control. You just popped up this little camera, which gives me some eerie Robocop vibes, and then you could wave your hands around, clasping them closed to select things and move them around. I often wonder how long people toyed around with this before just giving it up because it was so sketch. Oh, and let's not forget, this is a 3D TV. Now, Samsung was in the active 3D glasses camp, which meant that you had to charge or replace the batteries that powered the active shutters in the glasses. Sorry, I don't have any of those around, but well, there's a reason this was one of the last 3D TVs. And before all you 3D lovers out there get infuriated with me, let me just say that I think now would be a fun time to bring at home 3D back. But if they did, it would need to be passive. Those active glasses caused flicker that I could not stand. Okay, now let's get into the performance of this TV as we work our way up to making a comparison. So the term we used to toss around a lot back then and still do to this day from time to time was Inky blacks. Plasma TVs had inky blacks, while the LED backlit LCD TVs of the day struggled to make blacks that were anything other than kind of a milky gray. In a perfectly dark room, this TV does achieve perfect black levels with the right settings. However, once there is any light in the room, as you will see for yourself, the blacks take a hit because of the way the panel scatters ambient light. 
As for brightness, how bright was the brightest ever plasma? Well, I didn't measure TVs back then, but other reviewers claimed anything from 180 to just shy of 300 nits. Believe it or not, 300 nits was stellar in 2012, particularly for a plasma TV. Now, I'm curious how this thing is doing today, so I put it in dynamic mode, maxed out the cell luminance setting and the contrast and got a reading of 280 nits. Not too bad. So it occurs to me for folks who may not be in tune with the peak brightness of today's premium TVs, we expect them to hit at least 800 nits and the best TVs are flirting with like 2000 to 3000 nit levels. So yeah, things have changed quite a bit since then. Oh, and I almost forgot, this TV does not do HDR. It is SDR only, and it maxes out at 1080p resolution with a 60 hertz refresh rate. Also, it runs the HDMI 1.4B standard, and that being the case, I have to run separate video feeds on each of these TVs, so please forgive me if I don't sync everything perfectly. Hey, quick sidebar. So I know a lot of folks who are really excited at the idea of getting an e-bike until they went shopping for one and got struck by a lightning bolt of sticker shock. That's why I told them, just like I'm telling you now, about Upway. It's okay to get excited again because Upway is a 100% online retailer of both new and pre-owned e-bikes that are reconditioned to look and work just like new, require almost no assembly when they arrive, and best of all, cost a fraction of the prices charged by competing retailers. Upway ships its e-bikes 99% assembled, which means you are not doomed to IKEA assembly levels of frustration when your new e-bike arrives, and they'll be safe to ride because the important work was done by a pro. All I had to do when this gorgeous Stromer arrived was put on the pedals and straighten the handlebars. The tools I needed were in the box with instructions. It took me minutes and I was out riding in no time. And the bike is pristine and super easy to ride. I can't even tell it's pre-owned. And that's the point. Upway goes over every bike it sells with a fine toothed comb, including the battery, and replaces any parts needed so it looks and feels new. I'm thrilled with this thing. Upway sells both brand new and pre-owned bikes at up to 60% off MSRP and ships to your front door. Check out Upway's amazing selection of top quality pre-owned and new e-bikes from the best brands out there. And you can save $200 on any purchase over $500 using our code down in the description. Thanks to Upway for sponsoring this portion of our video. Now, let's compare the two. And a reminder, the S95C is an HDR TV with a peak brightness rating of about 1300 nits, so a full 1000 nits higher than the plasma is rated to hit. And since it is an HDR TV, it can produce far more colors in addition to being able to produce brighter colors. I mean, I'm going into this expecting the S95C OLED to blow the plasma out of the water. So, does it? Well, let's start out with playing SDR content on both TVs. And just for grins, I've restricted the resolution on the OLED to 1080p for now. I've also intentionally limited the S95C's brightness so that it matches up to what the plasma can do. And in a comparison like this, where we've got most of the lights shut off, the black levels don't appear to be all that different between the two TVs. But as soon as we turn the studio lights back on in the room, the plasma isn't gonna appear to have perfect blacks. But beyond that, you can still see a lot of difference in the colors. Okay, now let's take one of the gloves off the OLED. Now we're letting the S95C flex some of its brightness muscle. And here you can see that it is getting brighter than the plasma, but it isn't as super stark a difference in SDR when the signal isn't indicating anything brighter than 100 nits. There's not a lot of difference to see. But when we switch to HDR, the gloves are fully off. And folks, well, I mean, see for yourself. Now, in this footage, we've exposed the camera for the plasma TV. So the OLED is gonna look washed out to you. But even then, you can see that the plasma looks good. But the OLED is over on the right, pumping things out with some serious muscle. Actually, the average picture level for each TV is remarkably similar. But now we're gonna expose for the OLED. And the plasma, by comparison, is gonna look pretty dim. Now, while the plasma doesn't look significantly dimmer in terms of average picture level, like I just mentioned, the difference in the highlights is, well, folks, it's not even close. Once we get into HDR, the OLED just obliterates the plasma in all but one performance area. 
The color on the OLED is wider in coverage, richer, more saturated, and color brightness is on another level. The contrast is significantly better on the OLED, and as a result, this glass of water looks crystal clear and pure on the OLED, but dirty and murky by comparison on the plasma. And the highlights, folks. Now, we've got a lot of footage here with water droplets involved, and the sparkle and depth on the OLED is amazing. But on the plasma, there is neither sparkle nor depth. You know what's funny is that the S95C is now playing at 4K and the plasma at 1080p, but the resolution isn't a part of the discussion. It's the HDR. The HDR is what makes all the difference, at least at this 65 inch screen size. I mean, I'll just let the footage roll a bit longer so you can soak it in, but there's no question. You get way more TV for your money now than you did 11 years ago. I mean, there are mid-range LCD TVs today that would handily outperform the brightest plasma ever made. There is, however, one singular area in which the plasma appears to be superior. But it isn't actually superior. It's because of its inferior brightness that it seems to be superior. And that's with motion resolution, particularly in scenes with complex and tight patterns. Take a look at Sarah in a hammock. We've got the grid pattern of the hammock as well as the vertical lines of her blouse. And as you can see on the OLED, we see some strobing, kind of a flashing effect. Whereas the plasma looks nice and clean. Now the reason the OLED has this strobing effect is that its pixel response time is essentially instantaneous. It lights up immediately. And it's because it is capable of high brightness output immediately the movement of light from one pixel to the next has a strobing effect. The plasma's response time isn't quite fast enough and its brightness isn't quite high enough to create that same effect, so it appears to be smoother. You know, I gotta say, this Samsung plasma does a great job for an 11-year-old piece of technology. I think if we were to compare this plasma TV to a TV 10 years older than it, the difference would be much more significant. I mean, we're hearkening back to CRT days, right? Still, once we set aside nostalgia and the romanticization of the plasma era, something, by the way, which I do regularly myself, there's no denying that today's OLED TVs and in fact, today's best mini LED backlit LCD TVs are a significant step up in some crucial aspects of picture quality. I loved the Pioneer Curo series. It has an amazing legacy. I love the Panasonic ST60 and the pricier ZT60, best plasma ever made. And this Samsung F8500 was certainly one for the books too. But yeah, we have seen some remarkable progress. And having made this comparison, it's clear to me that the biggest improvement to our TVs has to be credited to HDR, not resolution. The brightness helps support the HDR ambitions, but HDR is about much more than just brightness. It's about highlights and detail and depth and color. I sure had fun making this video. I hope you had a fun time watching it. If you did, would you let me know by slapping this video with a like? Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.